Okay, so this is the beginning of another coral picture. So there's going to be some blue and <clears throat> lighter blue out here, um, indicating the coral is in the distance. Then there's going to be another darker blue down in here, and then down here, and maybe here, <clears throat> will be full color bright coral and fish and I'm not sure what's going to go on here yet but it'll be close up and it'll be bright colors some of the fish might be in the in the distance more in a blue kind of color um so let me see if I can get a close up so um this is going to be kind of light this is kind of a coral kind of dome things so there's going to be some dark shadows in here underneath maybe down here um, anyway so that's kind of the way this thing will develop so I have kind of and like I've said many times I really don't have a plan and when you don't have a plan you can't be disappointed so there's going to be these other type of coral that are um, circular oblong shapes and then there's just the shadows of them. Um, well, I'm not gonna do all. This is gonna be like sea anemone close up. So there might be a clownfish in here. I'm not sure yet. Um, but, and I'm not gonna do all these. I'm just gonna give you kind of a reference of how I do this. So they're kind of overlapping each other right now. Um, and when I figure out who's in front, I'll kind of erase the... So like if it, this is going to be in front, it would just go right over this one. Anyway, you get the idea, hopefully. Anyway, so that's kind of the steps okay so I've added a little bit more detail this will change also um, I'm gonna do a lionfish now this is just kind of rough I'll still need to go in there and fix the face they have really unusual faces I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the bottom here <clears throat> I'm gonna put different fish in here um, now this is the way I make multiples and of course, when I, I'm doing stuff, I'm making all kind of corrections on a tissue paper. Um, so it's easier to make corrections on that. Um, now these angel fish, I have two different sizes. And what I'm gonna do is I did this on the tissue paper with pencil. On the back side, I will go over it and then it's ready to go. So when I draw on the front side, it'll transfer it over. And I got two different sizes. Now the reason I do this, <clears throat> is because I do multiple uh, fish and pretty much fish pretty much look the same. Um, so I could do multiples of the same fish uh, with the drawing already done. So that's the reason for that. I don't know if you can see this too well, but I have transferred over a few of the angel fish and I'll go over them with the blue. Uh, the blue is watercolor pencil, so eventually when the water comes in, they should disappear. Okay, so I've kind of laid down the foundation. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the angelfish are still kind of within, uh, apparent. There's some light coral reflections in the background. Um, kind of lost the lionfish, but that's easy, well not that easy, to put back in. Um, I, yeah. Um, still have the shadows from some of the coral that I just washed over, so it's still a part of the um, drawing, painting. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to do this angelfish. Um, now, I'm going to be pulling out some color right now. It's going to be lighter. And I'm looking for some spots that are a little bit more brighter than others. Now, I'm just pulling out the color because it's going to be somewhat of an, in a distance. It's going to have like a blue tint. Now, I have hundreds and hundreds of brushes. Um, <laughs> but that's just the way things go. Um, and you always have your little favorites. And this little monster here is one of my favorites. Um, and it's actually a cheap, cheap brush. Uh, probably the the, it comes in a set with other brushes that I would have paid that price for one brush anyway and I can't find it anymore which drives me insane um, now this is kind of my go-to brush now because it's like a quarter inch flat brush but it is just it it's not really soft, so it doesn't bend. So it stays stiff as you're scraping through. And for me, that's just like, wow, that really works. Okay, so, um, and I have some other angelfish going the opposite direction, going the other way. Uh, but I just wanted to do, um, I'm gonna have to redo, I don't know if you can see that. But down here, there's an, um, a lionfish that I'm going to have to redraw because it just got totally wiped out. Um, but I, I'm going to be working on just mainly the angelfish anyway. So I'm not going to use black. Um, I'm going to use a combination of that blue, which is ultramarine, and a paint's gray. So it's not totally black um, anyway so I'm gonna come in here now I'm doing this kind of in a fash sense uh, mainly because you know time element and I would be taking more of my time and slowing down to do more detail but for demonstration purposes um, I just want to go a little quicker so I pulled out the highlight now it's not going to be extreme white um, maybe these other ones to the right of me will be I'll pull out most of the color as much as I can and then come back in and change things around and I per on purpose stopped right there and came from this other side because I'm going to meet up that gray. Now I'm going to clean off my brush and just use kind of um, I don't know if you can see that, but um, it gives a little light tint. Um, to that um, there's another little area here that needs my attention with this Payne's Gray Now, like I said, I'm going very fast. Um, and you'll never, it would just be way too long to see the detail kind of expand on here. But you can, I guess what I, I say is, you can get a, um, an idea of what 
I'm going for um, the essence of this little painting. Now this is another brush that uh, has become my favorite. Um, so obviously I bought a whole bunch because I knew I liked it. So, But it comes with a set. And I'm not really interested in the set. I'm just interested in this little brush. But, um, you know, if you have a brush that works for you, it's priceless. So it doesn't matter. And this line right here is too strong. I'm going to probably try to blend that out. Maybe make some shadows down here. And you can see it's just slowly building up color. Um, now because it's in the blue faded direction, chances are You won't see, oops, that's too much paint. See too much of a um, color range. And now these colors are coming in, but they will fade. And that's going to require multiple layers on top. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Now, it, it's also kind of like pre-drawing. And the way I draw is the way I paint, with little cross hatches. So it's layers on top of layers. And every time I put a layer in, it enhances the color. So some of these may have six, seven layers, maybe depending on what's needed, I may need more. Um, it's just kind of what's required. Now, normally I wouldn't So what I'm going to do is just that's way too strong. I'll have Now I'm going one, let me just get that out of the way. I'm going one direction this way for the scale part, and then I'm going to go the other direction. area out. And I'm going to come in with some white and just hit a few areas. Now it may look a little bright right now and it will and all these colors will fade and in an hour or two you'll see the real true color. But again, um, this is from my phone, so, uh, and when I see them projected on TV or computer, my paintings don't look like this. Um, it's kind of one of those things where um, the colors are all off. You can't see certain things. So going over that yellow with the white does give you the sensation that there is a 
a brighter yellow. Now, this is not totally bright because it is showing it from a distance, so it has kind of those um, little soft spots and kind of mixing with the color of the water. So the ones that are going to be down below me, um, they will definitely have brighter colors because they're going to be using more of a white as a background. Anyway, so I'm looking for little teeny areas where I can enhance. Now this will probably take a few more layers. Uh, just like it does have... How am I doing on time? Ew, we're... Okay, well, this is, gives you a better representation of how I, I paint. Um, now, this is a gigantic board. Um, but I'm gonna see if I can come in closer. So you can see the detail in there. And, and this is the way I handle a lot of my work. Some work is a lot looser, like the background's really loose. The coral starts off loose and there's just kind of random stuff. And this will continue to grow as time goes on. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to show another one of the progress. I may do another one with the coral kind of halfway done and some techniques on that while I'm doing it. And then after that, I'll just show the finished product or as close to finish because I never really finish. Uh, this is Steve Melendres. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, Design After History Museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos. Uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> So um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now so I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.